Hello everybody, welcome back to another tutorial and today I will be talking more about Twixer in a more in-depth format. Last time I did a Twixer tutorial, it was just one minute, it wasn't really too lengthy, it wasn't really too uh, juicy, I guess. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking more about how it works and what you can do to achieve the best Twixer so that you can possibly get. So without further ado, let's get started. I see. So first thing you want to do is make sure that your composition is the frame rate you want to achieve the Twixer in. So if it's 30 FPS, make sure you have your frame rate at 30 FPS in your composition. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll be using 23.976. It's just the main anime uh, frame rate. Uh, you can use 24 if you'd like for easier convenience or uh, any sort of like uh, straightforwardness, I guess. Um, you can use 30, 15, whatever you'd like. Very second tutorial, I'll just be using that. So what you want to do each time when you make a Twixer, you want to make sure that your frames move, and you don't want to catch subtle frame rates, su subtle frames such as the smoke uh, movements. You want to catch character movements, and I'll be talking about more of that and on why you should be subtle and maybe you know anything else that looks very still or anything that looks very uh little i'll be talking about that more about that later so what you want to do make sure you have all your keyframes highlighted you want to go from down up if you do up down it won't work the way uh, i'm going to show you so you want to go to keyframe assistant sequence layers press ok you don't need to worry about overlapping Recompose, and as you can see, every frame is moving in a smooth recording fashion. Pretty cool. And then I already have it up here, but you need to type Twixer like that or Twixer Pro. And here's when the fun begins. So, one thing that I really that is really crucial whenever you're making your frame rate, um, uh, a specific frame rate for your Twixer, you need to have it on your respective composition frame. Rate. Otherwise, you'll be adding in. Uh, a, uh, a higher threshold for your uh, frame rate uh, or a lower threshold or just some or just like having it at a lower frame rate or having it at a higher frame rate you get what i'm doing you get what i'm saying it's not going to look the same as what your composition is so what you want to do next is go to best here for motion vectors i don't change this at all uh you can experiment with that no motion vectors on three medium high blah 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 um, image prep, I put it to contrast edge hands. I don't really use linearize anymore. I don't know if it, if there's a, uh, a visual advantage or not. Uh, you can experiment with that, see what you'd like. Again, a lot of the Twixer, uh, uh, again, a lot of Twixer is experimental. So, if you'd like to experiment with Twixer, go ahead and make sure you, uh, have a, maybe make sure this, that this setting is according to your composition. Uh, but you can go ahead with all these other settings. It's up to you Time remap mode is speed. I don't change it to frame number a lot. Of, uh, some people I know do frame number on Their Twixter. I use speed for more convenience. And I don't change the speed Frame interpolation. I put motion weight in blend. Some people will keep it at blend Some people change the warping to inverse smart blend. I put it to forward and the main ba background layer settings is I keep it to 70 Sometimes people would put to 100. I keep it to 70. And then when you have your frame, when you have your Twixer settings assured, just pre-comp again. If you ever see something like this, make sure to move all attributes into the new composition. If you don't have that enabled right here, it will not work. And it's a really, it's really annoying when it doesn't work and you forget to put that setting. So, Control Alt T is next. This enables time rate mapping. This is crucial to any Twixter graph you want to make that wants to be extended. But keep in mind, uh, depending on the keyframes, it may not actually work very well. Um, so if you have like two or three keyframes, if you don't use like something like flow frames, uh, which is something I'll mention a little bit later, I won't go into a full tutorial on that, uh, maybe another day. But uh, if you use something like flow frames or you use like uh, two keyframes, or if you use like two keyframes, um, on your Twixture, um, instead of like getting your uh, keyframes all maxed out as much as you can, then it will actually not really work for longer distances uh, for when it comes to graphing. So just keep that in mind. 
if you're ever wanting to craft any other, if you're ever wondering if you want to extend your garage, make sure you have the right uh, keyframes uh, accommodated for that uh, method. The right amount of keyframes. So what you want to do next is cut um, your clip, uh, remove the excess here. You don't need that. Hover over your keyframes. Press F9. Open up the graph editor. Make like a simple maybe one two graph like this. This is what I consider one two. It's just one two boom done. Uh, as you can see, it'll take a little second to load if you're on a weaker hardware, which <laughs> I may be. So as you can see here, it is working. As you can see, it works. That is basically basic. That's a basic Twitster um, idea. That's basically basic Twitster uh, ing, I guess. Now another setting I'd like to talk about, just the miscellaneous settings that I'd like to talk about, that may or may not improve your experience, is these upper fields and lower field things. These fields actually can work really well with your, uh, your with your twisters, but I think it depends on your composition, frame rate, your amount, the amount of keyframes you have, and uh, whatever your clip is like, or if it's like one or two, or if it's like if it's like one or two um, keyframes, it probably won't work at all. But if it's like a lot of keyframes in one, or if it's like a whole clip that's smooth and doesn't need a lot of cutting then it may work with upper field or lower field. But sometimes in this, sometimes it doesn't really work very well. So just keep in mind, just be experimental with it. You don't have to always Im implement it into everything. Um, frame number, again, you can try frame number. Some people find it very, um, very uh, useful. Uh, just putting the frame number and then going on along with your graph. It's not that big of a deal to use speed or frame number, uh, but just use what you want. And I guess the last thing is use GPU. If you have a GPU, I would recommend using it. I don't have a GPU, so I just leave it off. Uh, I think from what I see, and don't don't trust my words on this. Don't completely trust my words. But if you put it on, I think it provides a better Twitter experience. That's what I would believe. But if it doesn't, then let me know in the comments. And last thing is I wanted to mention uh, earlier on is oh wrong one. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is the flow frames option. If you have flow frames, I will leave a link for it in the description. Flow frames is a video interpolator soft interpol interpolation software, sorry, um, that helps out with your uh, Twixers sometimes. Say if you have like a lot of like subtle moments you just want to get perfected um, in your Twixer, like subtle warp. You can get that completely, almost completely removed with any flow framing method you can do. But say if stuff like this, for example, where it like it warps the waves, sometimes that's harder to interpolate, and it, 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 it may not be worth it after all to try uh, flow frames. But if you have a GPU, um, like a high enough GPU, you might be able to get away with it. Um, I, at least from my experience, and I don't really have, I don't really have a discrete, like graphics card. Um, I don't know. Um, random information uh, I don't have a graphics card so this may not work out for me but it may work out for you if you use the GPU method uh, on your flow frames interpolation and one more thing I'd like to say is your graph has to be according to your uh, amount of keyframes so if it's this if this is like one two for example this is just one two like one two done if you do something like this where you like have the speed all the way up, you're going to get a faster, a faster rise and a and a slower a slower de a slower neutrality, and then like a, another fast point like that. You're you're not gonna have you're not gonna have, um, and especially with lower graphs, um, especially with uh, shorter graphs. Sorry, shorter graphs like this, for example, if I made it like 10 frames only. If I only made like 10 frames, it'll adjust to whatever your uh, frame, uh, your, um, your distance is. But if you do something like this, if you try to do the exact same thing, for example, if you try to do like this again, it's not gonna work out very well. Sometimes on your, uh, on, sometimes with the keyframes, it doesn't work very well. It actually warps them out of the, of the, of the screen. 
but for my case, I had enough keyframes to do it. So if, it may look something like this. Um, it looks very, it looks very smooth. It's not very uh, neutral. But if you were to just do something like this, if I control, if I press my control Z, then you just go back to something like that. So please, please be experimental with your graphs. Don't give it the one two all the time. You really don't need to do that. You can even have something like this if you really wanted to, where you could have like, depending on the circumstance, you need a specific graph. You can have something like this if you really wanted to. Um, maybe, no, 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 let me do it. You can have something like that even. It's a weird graph. I know it looks very weird, but you can have something like that at the circumstance maybe, maybe, maybe. But I don't know. That's that's pretty much about it. Torxer is a very uh, unique part of AMV editing, and it's um, but although it's it's unique, but also very re recommend encouraged by uh, editors because it really impacts your edit a lot. Individual, individual, individuality, smoothness, and overall flow. If you don't really like to twitch your that's okay, but I recommend doing it at least once. It's very fun. But other than that, that's about it. So if you enjoyed, please do comment down below. I'd love to do more tutorials soon. Um, I have a one frame tutorial, one frame tutorial in mind um, that will be coming soon. Maybe we'll see how my mood is. But yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.